I'm going to have to believe that not enough people are talking about Super Castlevania 4. I'm sure all the other Castlevania or Metroid games that came out afterwards are great. I've never played any myself, and I'm not trying to say that those are worse than Castlevania 4, but I think this game doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. There's so many great and fantastic things about this game that I believe go under the radar of people looking for a good Castlevania game. To be fair, it's not the fourth installment that you expect to be a masterpiece. And although I understand the people that click on this video are most likely people who are already fans of this game, if I can open up someone's eyes and witness this great game, it'll be worth it. The first thing I want to talk about, and what most people notice looking at this game, is the graphics. It being on the Super Nintendo console, which had 16-bit capabilities, the graphics here look absolutely amazing. Even 30-something years later, it still looks great. There's just something so appealing to 16-bit graphics that people gravitate to. Why do you think they keep on making new games look like older games? Not only the graphics, but the whole atmosphere of the game is also great. It's extremely obvious that the game was heavily inspired by the old Hammer horror films of the 1950s. Not only because those movies had the classic monsters, but the atmosphere that those movies create are felt in this game, with its lighting and its designs of the levels just give it a great feel. Speaking of the level design, the game designers did a great job of making every level look unique, not only from itself, but from any game I've ever played, which definitely comes in with the atmosphere of the game like I mentioned. I've never played another game with levels like Spinning Tales, The Haunted Hall, or The Treasury. The background spinning in such a unique way in Spinning Tales and swinging on giant chandeliers in The Haunted Hall. Speaking of which, I love the idea of remaking a level from the original game and putting it into this one, which they did the same thing with the music, and I'll talk about that soon. I love the little details in all these levels, like on the chandeliers, the candle flames actually move with the movement of the chandelier, or how when you kill bird enemies, when they disappear after you kill them, feathers fall off the screen. In the mummy boss fight, the platforms are arms of a giant clock, and in spinning tails with the skulls in the wall following you with their eyes. These things to me show how much care they put into this project. Not only did they clearly care about the level design, the music, which is fantastic, is another symbol of how much they care about this game. There's so many great songs in here, to the point where I've used some of the music in my, one of my movies. I'll talk about this briefly since I just want you to listen to it yourself. Like I said, in the level The Clock Tower, they they remake music from the original Castlevania, which is awesome. A theme that really sticks out for me is the one used in the treasury. It's genuinely a masterpiece, probably the best Castlevania theme. Some of the music fits the atmosphere so perfectly. I love the music in this game. The gameplay in this game is also great. Unlike the original Castlevania, where you can whip in one direction and your controls feel choppy, Simon has so many different abilities and movements, he can whip in eight different directions, and if you hold down the Y button, you can move the whip in any direction you want. And your movements are really smooth and fluent. You can jump and whip up, down. As Simon Belmont, you can really do anything, even take down some fantastic bosses. Dracula, Grim Reaper, a giant skull, Medusa, a giant bird skeleton, two-headed dragon, and a lot more. The references to the Universal monsters are more than welcome, like the Frankenstein monster or the Mummy. Some people might dismiss this game for its lack of Metroid style that the newer games find as a crutch, but if you go back and play this game, I think people realize that there's nothing wrong with a linear Castlevania game. I mean, this game is already jam-packed with great content to keep a player entertained, and enough of the creepy music and atmosphere to keep the player engaged, because when you pick up the controller, and pick Castlevania 4 and switch it on. That perfect score kicks in every time you let that opening scene play, with the fog and the sound effects of the grave cracking apart with Dracula's spirit flying out, emerging yourself and your whole room. And then that opening crawl of text lures you in with this game's thick but simple story, explaining Dracula's return to the living, and how Belmont, or yourself, have to solve this mayhem that occurs in Transylvania, but with every little hiccup that occurs in this journey, a simple but difficult journey. For watching that castle crumble, and Simon, or yourself, standing proudly watching your success unfold, with the thousands of satisfied souls in Transylvania, and for once, you are one of them. And for a long time, or a short time, you are happy with your success, because no matter what, he always returns.